Welcome to Strathroy. As usual, this video is designed as an aid to exploration. Log off the computer, pull up this video on your phone, and go for a walk. Each time I'm done talking about a building, I'll throw up a map to get you to the next one. Pause the video and take a stroll. Indeed, feel free to wander off script for a while. I'll still be there when you get to the next site, and there's always another side street to explore. Strathroy had its beginnings as a town in 1836, when John Buchanan erected a flour mill on the site. By the time the railway arrived in 1856, the settlement had grown into a town of several hundred people, boasting a post office and several churches. The arrival of the Great Western Railway, however, solidified Strathroy's position as a local centre for the surrounding farms. The railway allowed local farmers to send their produce to market quickly and easily, and to acquire finished goods from London, Hamilton, and Toronto in exchange. At the same time, the railway allowed for the establishment of a number of small industries in Strathroy, including a dramatically larger flour mill, the manufacture of wool stockings, and most impressively, a piano factory, which operated until it was destroyed by fire in the 1920s. Like many small cities in the Great Lakes area, Strathroy offered the local community the amenities of larger urban centres in miniature, eventually playing home to two theatres, a fire department, a hospital, and a chamber of commerce. Our walk today begins at the intersection of Frank and Front Streets. The bank on the northwest corner of Frank and Front was built in 1911 as the Canadian Bank of Commerce. An impressive classical structure, the bank was designed by Darling and Pearson, one of Toronto's leading architectural firms at the time, a fact which may partially explain its dramatically urban character. When built, the upper floors of the building served as residential quarters for the bank clerks, who were expected to double as security guards at night. Walk a block south on Frank Street. This stretch of Frank developed into Strathroy's principal commercial strip shortly after the arrival of the railway and continues to boast some excellent Victorian storefronts. Stop at the intersection of Frank and Centre Streets. The impressive Romanesque post office on the northeast corner of Frank and Centre was built in 1889 to plans by Thomas Fuller. Fuller was the federal government's chief architect and had been given the task of developing a unified architectural style for all federal buildings across the country, designing well over a hundred buildings during his tenure with the Department of Public Works, ranging from the Parliament buildings in Ottawa to dozens of local post offices like this one, intended to emphasize the permanence of the still new federal government. The building's clock and bell date to 1901. Closed as a post office in 1964, the building has recently been extensively renovated as an upscale restaurant and hotel. If you're interested, walk half a block west on Center Street to see two of Strathroy's smaller historic churches. The building at 15 Center Street was built in 1886 as the home of Strathroy's Salvation Army, while the church across the street was built for Strathroy's Baptist community two years later. Otherwise, or when you're finished, continue half a block south on Frank Street. On the west side of Frank Street, midway between Centre and James, is Strathroy's Town Hall, the fourth on the present site. The lot was purchased by the municipality to serve as a combined market hall and municipal chamber in 1863, and a small building was erected at that time. Two subsequent buildings reflected the growth of the town, and by 1928 the third town hall was, in its turn, deemed inadequate to Strathroy's needs. The present crisp neoclassical structure was erected in 1928 to plans by London architects Watt and Blackwell, and when built housed the fire department, police department, jail and public library, in addition to the council chambers. The open space to the south, now a parquet, continued to be used as a farmer's market. The bell on the building's tower dates to 1886 and is the only surviving element of Strathroy's third town hall. Across the street from the town hall is the site of the former Wesleyan Methodist Church. In the mid-19th century, Canada's Methodists were divided into several competing denominations, no less than six of which had some formal presence in Strathroy. One of the largest were the Episcopal Methodists, who erected a large brick church on Frank Street in 1874. The church was demolished in 1913, a decade after the 1901 merger of Strathroy's various Methodist congregations into a single church. South of the Town Hall, on the northwest corner of Frank and James Streets, is Strathroy's Public Library Building, built on the site of the old public armories. The armories were erected in 1907 to plans by David Ewart, then Chief Architect of the Department of Public Works, and echoed on a smaller scale the design of armories in larger cities across the country. The structure closed in 1958, and for a time there was serious talk about the library, then in desperate need of larger facilities, moving into the old building. The town, however, felt that an entirely new building would better suit the library's needs, and the old armories were torn down in 1964. Walk one more block south on Frank Street to Albert Street. For many years, Strathroy's railway station was located on the south side of this intersection. 
The Great Western Railway had originally intended to bypass Strathroy to the south, in order to avoid the swamp which once occupied the ground on which the station stood. Following protests from the nascent town, however, combined with generous financial incentives, the railway agreed to build directly through Strathroy. The first train stopped in Strathroy in 1856, but the town was forced to make do with a temporary wooden station for nearly 30 years. A new station came in 1887, shortly after the Great Western had been purchased by the much larger Grand Trunk Railway. The Grand Trunk invested extensively in their new network, and Joseph Hobson, the railway's chief engineer, designed impressive new stations across southwestern Ontario. Many of Hobson's works, including those in Woodstock, Chatham, and Sarnia, remain in use as railway stations to the present day. Strathroy's station, however, was destroyed by arson in 2004. Walk two blocks west on Albert Street to Richmond Street. The earliest Presbyterians in Strathroy were served sporadically by a Presbyterian minister from London, who performed services several times a year, but by 1862 the community had grown to the point where a permanent church was warranted. Early on, the congregation continued to have difficulty attracting a permanent minister, but by the 1870s a larger structure was required, and in 1877 the London architectural firm of Robinson, Tracy and Fairbairn were hired to design the present Gothic building. Walk a block north on Maria Street to Front Street. The large brick church on the northwest corner of Maria and Front Streets was built in 1880 as the third home of Strathroy's Wesleyan Methodist community. Once one of several Methodist groups in town, in 1901 the church merged with the former Episcopal Methodist Church on Frank Street to form a single United Methodist congregation. In 1925 the church's identity changed again as Canada's Methodist Church merged into the newly formed United Church of Canada. Turn right, walking three blocks east on Front Street to Caradoc Street. The red brick building on the southeast corner of Front and Caradoc was built in 1915 as the new home of the Strathroy Age, the town's liberal newspaper. In the 19th century, Canadian newspapers were often explicitly partisan publications, and Strathroy was home to two, the Age, which supported the Liberal Party, and the Dispatch, which supported the Conservative Party, both papers having been founded in the 1860s and engaging in an ongoing battle for local readership. Both were hit hard, however, by both the increasing availability of newspapers from London and Toronto and the advent of radio as a delivery device for news. In 1921, they merged into the Strathroy Age Dispatch, which continues to publish local news to the present day. Before moving on, notice the former commercial hotel on the southwest corner of Front and Caradoc, built in 1862, and the best preserved of several large hotels which sprung up in Strathroy in the mid-19th century. Walk two blocks further east on Front Street to Head Street. The northeast corner of Front and Head was once home to John Buchanan's mill, built in 1832 and the first commercial structure in what is now Strathroy. The mill offered a location for local farmers to process their grain, and as such developed into the nucleus of an agricultural community. The intersection of Front and Head Streets developed into the centre of the new town, but the establishment of the Great Western Railway Station, two blocks further west in 1856, shifted the town's centre. The mill has long disappeared, but the associated dam, mill pond, and mill race can still be seen on the river to the north. Across Front Street, on the south side of Front, just east of Head, is All Saints Roman Catholic Church. The parish was established in 1868 to serve the community of Irish immigrants who were pouring into every part of Ontario in the wake of the potato famine. The present building is the parish's third, replacing a plain Gothic structure which had been erected in 1876. Turn left, walking half a block south on Head Street. You're looking for St. John the Evangelist Anglican Church. The oldest surviving church in Strathroy, the present structure of St. John the Evangelist dates to 1863. There had been an Anglican church on the site since 1842, with the present church erected shortly after the arrival of the railway brought about a population boom in Strathroy. The church was dramatically expanded to the rear in the early 1870s. We've come to the end of the walk. From here you can return to the beginning of the walk by heading half a block north on Head Street to Front, turning left and walking two blocks west on Front Street to Frank. Alternately, you could spend the rest of the afternoon exploring the pleasant residential streets that surround central Strathroy.